my equestrian friends, I have a fun video for you today. I have always wanted to make rails like these Voltaire design rails. And today, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. It's not easy, but it's fun. And here are some jump rails that I made a while ago that I left outside and the elements got to them. Yep, that's what they look like. So I need to get the rails in shape first before I can actually paint them. So the first thing I did was take my handy dandy orbital sander and get most of the rough finish paint off of the rails themselves. This is a really important step. So if you're planning on making your own rails or repainting your rails, I think it's a good idea to make sure you have a good painting surface. And a new trick that I learned is to put some screws in the ends of my jump rails because this way I can paint the entire rail at one time without having to wait for the paint to dry while I'm turning it. So I just took some three and a half inch screws and screwed them into the end of the rails. The next most important thing is to have a good base. So I'm using Kills 2 Primer and I'm priming each of the individual rails so they have a nice primer coat that the finishing paint will hopefully adhere to much better than the last paint job that I did. Here are the rails all primered and waiting. And you can see where I have the little screws on the ends of the rails, making it easier for me to paint the complete rail without having to wait for it to dry in between. And once my primer paint was dry, then it was time to start working on the stripes. And I actually sketched out a pattern of how I wanted the striping pattern to be on each of the rails. This gave me a good starting point to where to begin my striping pattern. So I started in the center with a stripe that was 12 inches wide. And I started with one color of paint. I only did one color at a time. So the most important part here is to measure off the stripes and then use a painter's tape of some sort to make sure the paint isn't going to bleed through. And like I said, I started with tan and I started with one rail first just to basically give me a template for the other two rails. And I made this tan paint by combining brown and some almond colored Rust-Oleum paint because I didn't have any tan paint. So I just combined what I already had. Now the first rail is all done, so now that's gonna be my template for the next two rails of taping off where the tan stripes are gonna go on these rails. See how easy I can turn the rail because of using the screws on the ends? And then once I had the entire rail taped off for the tan stripes, I went ahead and painted the tan stripes. And 
and then I was so excited to put this color on. I didn't even let the tan dry because I figured I could do two colors at one time. So then I was really excited to paint on the turquoise stripes. I really like the brightness of the turquoise and I couldn't find turquoise in Rust-Oleum paint so I actually went to Sherwin-Williams and bought a quart of their oil-based enamel paint and I got it in a satin finish because it was a little more affordable than if I got the high gloss finish. And then once the tan and the turquoise were dry, I removed the original tape for striping and then I put on more tape because I'm gonna be doing another color. So some of this worked really good because I could just put the tape on the end of the color that I had previously painted, which makes it a lot easier to get nice crisp lines between the painted colors. And you see those rough edges? Don't worry, they'll be just fine in the end. And this is the second set of striping that I'm going to be working on this rail. And I really enjoy when I get to add a new color. So the next color that I'm using is brown and it's Leather Brown by Rust-Oleum. This was a really pretty, just intense color that worked really well with the turquoise and the tan that I had already painted on. And again, all of the paints that I'm using are oil-based enamel. This will make it so they can withstand the elements better and hopefully stand up to being used. Once the brown was done, then I was able to paint the white. Again, this is Rust-Oleum paint and it is in the high gloss white. Most Home Depot stores have the Rust-Oleum paint ready-made, you just buy it off the shelf, which makes it really easy and you don't have to wait for paint to be mixed. And these are the rails pretty much done with the brown, the white, the tan, and the turquoise. So now all that's left to do is to remove the tape and do a little bit of touch up work because you can see the tape actually peeled off some of the paint underneath. But look at how crisp those stripes are for the most part. And to do the touch up work, I could have added more tape to do the stripes, but it really wasn't too much touch up that I had to do. So I just decided to freehand it. really like the narrow stripes with the thicker stripes. It just really makes it look 
really unique and I really like it. So now my rails are all done. The touch up work is done and now it's time to see how they turned out. These rails are 10 foot long and the standards that I have are four foot tall standards. There's the third rail going into place. And there's one more thing that I wanted to add, a white plank. Yes, I am done. There is my beautiful Voltaire design inspired jump that I got the idea from watching the Grand Prix at the Colorado Horse Park. I am really happy how this turned out. 29 stripes per rail, not a bad day's work. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching my video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and watch all my other horse related and DIY videos so you can make the most of the time that you have with your horse. <laughs>